Hi Stuart. Hello. <laughs> Hello Kay. We've just done a demonstration day and you put some lovely panels behind for our drummer that came in. Yes. Um, and it was connected to a media server. Media server, yeah. yeah. Green camera. Yeah, and, uh, and then some content put on there. Yes. Yeah. So for a complete novice like myself, what on earth are, what, what are the panels? What are they? Yeah. Uh, these are the ProLights Omega Pix 26B panels. So ProLights Omega Pix. So ProLights is a range for music and lights. Okay. Uh, Omega Pix is their premium range of indoor LED panels. Mm -hmm. uh, and the 26 part means that it's a 2.6 mil pixel pitch panel. So okay. the reason for that, we're nice and close in this environment. So uh, viewing distance, basically. Oh, okay. And then. They run, so the content that's put onto those comes from the Green Hippo media server? It does, but in that signal path is also the Nova Star processor. Right. Too, uh, of which we use an MX40. So, yeah, we've got the Green Hippo server delivering the content or playing back the content, uh, of which we just use the stock library. Right. And that's then outputting to the video wall processor, which then translates that data into Nova Star language and sends it to the panels. Oh, okay. So how would you, how would people input content onto something like that? Yeah, so I guess every LED screen is different. Okay. Because uh, of course these are modular LED panels, so you know, it can be an infinite size almost, mm. in height, width, but obviously what we've done here, a little bit quirky is introduce gaps. So we need to compensate yeah. for those gaps. Mm -hmm. So if you were to just, output your laptop DVD player, something like that, to to the panels, you've got to have something that can compensate for the gaps. Now, yes, in the, in the Novastar software, you can put gaps in, that adds a bit more to the processing. You know, you could get away with it in this small environment, but when we go much bigger scale, then you've got to have something like a Hippo that can split, make the gaps up. So you've got what the real world sees, what you see here, and then you've got um, just what the process wants to see, so it might be all stuck together. So we've got to manage that. Okay. We can do that with the media server. Oh, okay. So really, a bit Good of stuff. Extra. Um, how does it link with audio? Can you do that? You can. I mean, you can play audio back from Green Hippo server, but of course we were uh, doing kind of sound to video, so we're taking an input source, right. and then we've got a component in Hippotizer called Beatbridge. So, right. you know, a bit like lighting to sound, you know, you could do a tap tempo, you could get any pin within a green hippo to, um, to adjust to the bass, mids or highs. So on the kick, we could get it to stroke Just if we wanted to, yeah, to the yeah. beat. So it's great for on the fly stuff, definitely. For a smaller venue that has, say, bands on and things like that, um, and they have screens behind, then would you say it's ideal to use? Because then they might be doing the, the audio, they might be doing the lighting, and then they've got a video uh, panel behind them. Yeah. So using that to audio would be an easy and convenient Absolutely. way. Yeah, because otherwise, I guess, if, if you're doing it with your own laptop, it's like, well, how do you get that? You know, if you bought yourself a clip from online, how do you get to play that back at the correct time? in B in sync or how, you know, what we're, what we're doing here with a media server, with the Green Hippo server, is that it's a, a real-time manipulator of content. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's not, it's not a rigid set of rules. Right. It's totally on the fly. So when you turn up from gig to gig, you can, you can change the overall size of what we're doing. So this is, like I say, infinitely expandable depending on the size of your stage. Yeah. But likewise, so is the media server. You know, it's got more outputs. It's, you know, we're doing stuff to the music. We're doing it in real time. So. For um, people that are doing larger events, things like that, how many media servers would they need to use, depending on the event? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I guess uh, you know, if it's just a single screen output, you know, you, you know, with this particular one, I've used a bit of a sledgehammer to crack a nut, I guess, by using the Boreal, <laughs> which you know we see on many of the you know, live TV shows on a Saturday night, you know, you know, you, you, you'd use multiple versions of that to do those big canvases. But, you know, 
quite easily, you know, a, a Nevis, which has the same feature set. Okay, it doesn't have the capture card, but you can input via NDI. So if you're doing live cameras, we can get around it. But I mean, that's a single 4K output, and crikey, we're probably only 400 pixels wide. So it's, this is tiny, you know, but you could easily create a look off of, off of something like a Nevis. What would you say, like, redundancy-wise, what are people set up? like because i mean they're quite expensive things aren't they yeah so if somebody say can only afford to get one yeah there's no real redundancy is there there's not no, no. if you're running one there is no redundancy yeah, yeah. i mean it's always a great question as well the redundancy how far do you go in a system do you i mean you can't you can't back that bit up you no. know the screen is the screen mm -hmm. you know okay we supply screens that you know have uh modules so if there was a pixel to you know, in live TV, you know, you might have to change a pixel during the ads or something, but um, you don't tend to have redundancy there. The processor, you need to really have redundancy there, and that's in the Novastar element. Um, you kind of run those main and back up. Um, but then from the content playback point of view, we tend to see that people might buy the larger system, which might be a Boreal, a Cast, or even an Amber, and then have something like a small Nevis just as that get me out of jail single output of, you know. Just something. To just something, yeah. yeah. Because it's in that same workflow as well, you know. Um, because if you're, like we have done, is integrating with the lighting desk, you're integrating with, you know, audio, you know, so, so many different things. Yeah. Um, it's hard to replace that with just a laptop or yeah. something like that. You, you know, you can't, it has to be server for server, really. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, as well, it's it's having that um, those reassurances that you know you're using a hardware and software package that is tried and tested to do so many layers, so many push, so many pixels, integrate all this thing with pixel mapping LED fixtures, what being having a light and desk controlling it, what's doing open it, it, it can do all these things. Mm. But you know, if if you were to make your own server, you know, your own computer do that, I'd be really worried you know doing shows <laughs> be on the edge of a seat so it's really important you know the redundancy and i get it you know their media server package it is hardware software it is expensive but it's the reassurances that you get with it you know it's tried and tested yeah in all scales of the project okay so i suppose that's really answered my last question is that what are the biggest and most frequent issues that you hear from customers and clients that use this and what are the problem solvers? How do, you, how do they get around it? When you look at it, you know, a media server, there's so many, like we were saying, there's so many different ways that you can control a media server, so many devices that it can talk to or it, or it can receive data from to manipulate it. Um, there's always going to be this quirky combination that a client, that customers can have mm -hmm. that crashes the user interface and you're going to be like, oh, oh no, what's happened? But one of the strongest points about the Green Hippo is that it's got a it's got the engine and Zookeeper. So if the Zookeeper, your user interface was to crash, it's two seconds just to reload it, but your engine carries on running. Oh. So, you know, it's just the operator that might see that. It's just the case of reporting those bugs. And unfortunately as well, Green Hippo um, has a support network that's, um, you can reach it 24 seven, 365 mm. uh, globally. So there's always someone at the end of the phone to help you get around it. So, Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd like to add? <laughs> uh, no, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah.